Hello everyone, this is Chad with Good Creative Tutorial. Today I want to go over the gradient tool in Adobe Photoshop. And there's a couple of neat things we can do with this tool a lot of people might not know about. So let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and open up a photo uh, in Photoshop. And if you click on the toolbar, uh, you should see gradient tool. If you just press G on the keyboard, it should highlight it. If not, if you have the paint bucket tool selected, just click and hold on to that. It should bring up the little fly menu and then just click on gradient tool. As soon as we select that, you can look up in the options panel up here, a couple different options, um, and you can click the down arrow here and it'll give you some presets. Uh, and if you hover over them, it'll tell you what those defaults are, like foreground to background. Basically what that'll do is whatever you have set as your foreground color, if you click it and set it, um, that will be one end of it, and then your background color will be the other end. Um, then there's another one, the foreground color to transparency, and so on. There's a couple more options up here we should go over, though. Uh, the first one's kind of the default, just a linear gradient. So if you just click and drag at an angle, it will apply that gradient. All right. So if I have, for example, let me just choose this first one, foreground to background, it's this blue to this white click and drag, then it just does that simple gradient. And if I hold shift, click and drag, it will go at 45 degree angles. So it can go completely left and right, or 90 degrees to that up and down, or 45 degree angle as well. All right. The second one's kind of a radial gradient, and so it just creates a gradient um, coming out from the center, wherever you start clicking and dragging. The other one, an angle gradient, if you click and drag that out, it just kind of goes clockwise uh, from where we click and drag. And the other one is reflected gradient, so if I click and drag with that, it's going to go in either direction from where we uh, click and drag. So it's kind of like the linear gradient, but instead of from blue to white, it's blue and then to white on either side. And then finally, the last one's a diamond gradient. If you click and drag that, it just creates a diamond under mode, if you click and experiment with some of those, basically that what that is is if you notice as I've been applying these gradients, it's replacing what's here if I just have it on normal. So if I click and drag, it covers up what's there. You could create a new layer on the layers panel and then click and drag and then change the layer blending mode to something over there for a different effect or you could adjust the opacity, but another way to do something similar is just change it up here to begin with. You wouldn't create a new layer. You just say, for example, uh, screen, and then click and drag, and that just creates a different effect. Uh, so usually going to create a new layer, create the gradient on a new layer, and then adjust it here instead of just doing it there with mode, but different preferences. Uh, for opacity, this is kind of like if we were changing the opacity of a top layer. Uh, so it's going to be stronger if we have 100% and then 1% will not be as strong, obviously. Reverse just reverses the direction of the gradient. So if you have a linear gradient, instead of blue to white, it would be white to blue. Then dither is it does a smoother gradient, so there's less banding. And then finally transparency, if you don't have that checked, let's say we had this one here from foreground color to transparent and I unchecked it, it would not, uh, let me do normal here, it would not do the transparent part, which is just a solid color in that case. All right. So if I click and drag and do keep transparency checked, then it does maintain the transparency. So that's the basics of the gradient tool and using some of the defaults here, you can go through and see some of those. All right. But you can also create a custom gradient. So how do you do that? Well, instead of clicking this down arrow, if you just click over it somewhere up at the top, um, then it pulls up the presets that we just saw. But it also has this area down here where we can create a custom one. All right. So you can start on one if you want, use it as kind of a, a preset. And you can adjust it. Uh, this area up here, this little arrows here, if you double click them, nothing's going to happen. You might be saying, well, how do I change the color? That's not the color. That's actually the opacity. All right. If you change a color, you have to click on these bottom ones here. 
So if you double click on this bottom stop here, this color stop, you can choose a custom color. And then I can double click on the other one. They do kind of a complementary color in a way. Um, and then we have a new gradient. All right. And if you click the top area, you can adjust it. Say you wanted this left side here, the blue side to be partly transparent. You can do that as well. Uh, this middle area, this little diamond on either side. Oops. Let me delete that one. Uh, when you click just one of these stops, say the color stop, this diamond shows up, that's at 50%, just halfway. If you move it to the left, it'll just have more of this hand side when you apply the gradient. And if you bring it to the right, you'll have more blue. All right. By default, it's in the middle, then you have half and half. You saw earlier when I clicked here, you can actually add another stop. So if I click here, you can add another stop. You can actually change it down here as well, uh, or you can just double click on it. And let's choose some kind of blue or some kind of green. And then you have even more complicated one. Now to delete a stop, you can just click it and hit delete. All right. Or you can click and drag it off that gradient. Just click and drag it down. So we could create a couple in there, as many as we needed. And also the midway point in each as well. All right. So that's creating a custom one. Once you had it, you could name it. So I'll just call it new gradient. And notice we have solid here. All right, in another tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do a noise gradient, but in this one, we'll just do solid. Smoothness, that's just how smooth the gradient's gonna be. So if we have it 100% by default, that's fine. Then you just click new, and then it adds it right here. So we click okay, now we can actually use it. So if I click and drag it, obviously replaces the pixels there or you can do let's try overlay click and drag then it adds kind of a hue almost like a hue adjustment to it. its little bit uh, unique effect all right or again we could create a new layer set it to normal click and drag and then adjust the blending mode over here for a specific kind of look some of the presets though you might want to check out uh, if you go back um, up here on the down arrow, these are some default presets, but if you click this little gear here, and then you've got color harmonies, metals, neutral density, photographic toning, special effects. If you go to neutral density, and um, this just means that you want it to replace or append. If I hit append, it'll just add it to the bottom. Neutral density gradient filter in photography is, if you have a... Uh, you know, landscape shot and it's overexposed in the sky because you're metering for the foreground or the middle ground that's not as bright and that's properly exposed but then the sky is overexposed. You could use a neutral density gradient filter to uh, darken the sky a little bit so it would even out and wouldn't be as overexposed. So you, there's a couple defaults in there. So if you hover over them there's just neutral density, neutral density 10, 20, you know, all the way up to 90, then you have back to black to transparent, neutral density light. So if you click one, the idea would be if you click here and then click down, if you hold shift, it'll be perfectly level there. And then it would just cover and darken up the top a little bit. It'd be better practice to actually add a new layer and then click and drag it down, depending on the photo, but this makes it more customizable. You could adjust the blending mode here, or if you kept it normally, you thought it was too strong, you can just bring the opacity down a little bit of that layer that we just created. C creating a new layer, I would say, is better practice than just using the adjustment mode up here um, on the original layer. All right, but go ahead and experiment with all those different gradients. It's pretty fun uh, effects you can do, and and then. Another one, I will show you how to create another kind of customizable gradient, which is a noise gradient. All right, so be sure to subscribe for more Photoshop tutorials. Uh, have fun with the gradient tool. We will see you next time. Thanks.